Greetings World. We are anonymous. The reports from Italy, detail the grim reality of a nation on lockdown. All businesses, with the exception of pharmacies and food stores, have closed their doors. Airlines are cancelling flights, and roadblocks are preventing people from leaving, or entering towns. It presents a glimpse of how dramatically American life can change, if the coronavirus continues to spread rapidly in the United States. Many US cities are already encouraging social distancing. Schools and universities are temporarily closing, and are switching to remote learning platforms. Conferences, musical festivals, and other public events, are being cancelled, and going virtual online. These kinds of disruptions, stands to get more severe in the coming weeks. They can also come with an unexpected side effect, an impact on carbon emissions. The spreading of the virus has caused a dip in carbon emissions. The reasons include, a temporary blow to industrial activities in China, falling demand for oil, and a decline in air travel. As China, one of the world's largest carbon emitter, experts already estimated, that carbon emissions over the past month of February 2020, have been about 25% lower than normal. Those effects are not just unexpected, but recorded in history, that global disasters, particularly those with major effects on the economy, tends to drive a temporary decline in carbon emissions. The 2008 recession, for example, was accompanied by a temporary dip in global carbon emissions. On a local scale, the climate impact of an epidemic is more complex. It is likely to hinge on a wide variety of changes in the way people carry out their daily lives, from how often they leave their homes, to how they travel around their cities, to how they do their shopping. Scientists are still working to understand how fast this new coronavirus will spread, how it might respond to the now changing weather patterns, and why it affects some demographics more severely than others. As it turns out, this virus, may also teach scientists something about the complex relationships among everyday human behaviors, their response to large-scale disasters, and their carbon emission footprints, if you pull one string here, and one string there, you will see the effects on everything, like with the economy and carbon emission footprints, they are so interrelated, that you really quickly start to see all these complex interactions. Transportation is already taking a hit in parts of the United States. Schools and universities are closing campuses across the country, and many companies are encouraging their employees to work from home. In places like New York City, officials are warning residents, to exercise caution on public transit, where it is often impossible to avoid close contact with the large number of people. Some data indicates that the school closures, and the work from home mandates, have already reduced traffic flow around certain cities. Reports from Data Analytics Company, INRIX, point to significant increases in the speed of traffic in the Seattle area, as highways are empty. Similar statistics have suggested, that rush hour traffic is down in New York City as well. And reports from Bay Area Rapid Transit, which serves San Francisco said, ridership on public transit has fallen precipitously, the bar ridership dropped by 8% between the end of February, and in the first week of March 2020. And it was a whopping 25% lower in the second week of March 2020, than it was in the last week of February 2020. The transportation sector is the biggest contributor to carbon emissions in the United States. As schools and businesses close their doors, reduced travel could temporarily drive down carbon emissions in communities, where people are spending more time at home. Less vehicle traffic seems good for the climate, but there is a potential catch. There has been a lot of studies on the benefits of telecommuting, and the conclusion usually is, depends on the populace. If people are spending more time in their homes, they could be using more energy. It depends largely on weather conditions, geography, 
and different family lifestyles. If an individual goes home to a cold house and have to heat it, that is going to offset the savings from not driving a vehicle to work. If the individual come home to a beautiful day, then they really will not be using much more energy than if they were at work. There is also the possibility, that people may spend more time watching television, or using appliances if they feel cooped up in their houses. That could end up having a higher energy usage. Pandemics like the coronavirus, could also spur less obvious behavior changes, which may nonetheless affect a household's carbon emission footprint. Reports have seen a recent spike in online shopping and home deliveries, especially for groceries. This is likely another byproduct of the virus, as people increasingly avoid public spaces. The carbon emission footprint of online shopping, compared with making purchases in a store, is often tricky to pass out. According to a recent study, it may largely depend on whether the deliveries come from a store in the community, or are shipped in from somewhere else, and what are the means of transport the shopper would ordinarily use, to pick up the items in person. That adds one more level of complexity to the impact of coronavirus on household carbon emission footprints. To top it off, there is a great deal of uncertainty about how much worse the virus will become in the United States, and how deeply it might affect the national economy. In China, domestic carbon emissions plummeted, as industrial activities faltered, in the United States, a major economic downturn would likely drive a further decrease in carbon emissions, as people simply consume less resources. The biggest potential impact of this virus is, the effect on the economy, and if it affects the entire economy, then that is going to affect the economic output, consumption, and carbon emissions. There is nothing to celebrate about the spread of the coronavirus, even if it does contribute to a temporary decline in carbon emissions. Global carbon emissions tends to bounce back shortly after a global disturbance ends. Coronavirus has already killed thousands of people around the world, including several dozen in the United States. But the pandemic may hold some insight into the ways that cascading changes in human behavior can affect the carbon emissions. Disturbances such as hurricanes, and other natural disasters, have provided these kinds of lessons. But one key difference with the new coronavirus is, that a lot of the behavioral changes amongst the people, are voluntary. I think this is somewhat like a novel, in the way that we are trying to do social distancing, and really slowing down our economies in significant ways. And that does happen with natural disasters, but also you have a lot of your infrastructure disrupted. We can have our infrastructure in place, but we are just slowing down the economy. Recent data from the New York State Department of Transportation indicated, an increase in cyclists over New York City bridges in March 2020. The increase would seem to suggest, that people who have the ability to commute by bicycle versus other forms of transit, are increasingly choosing to do so, as the outbreak spreads. It is a lesson in human behavior and motivations. It is also a warning about disaster preparedness at the city level, and the ways that resilience in both the public health sphere and the climate sphere, can often overlap. For resiliency in crises, public health and carbon emission reductions, it is critical to build cities that cater for zero carbon emissions, and healthy modes of transportation. The so-called corporate controlled government can do that, by investing in safe, segregated bike lanes, and excellent sidewalks, as well as replacing all fossil fuel burning vehicles, with electrical powered vehicles. These are all key aspects of resilient, that sadly, are often neglected. The coronavirus is reminding all of us, that we badly need this kind of shift in investment, for our future generations. Whether people may continue to apply the more carbon-friendly changes in their behavior after the pandemic is over, is just another question. Certainly in the short term, we will see big changes in behavior, and that is going to have an impact on carbon emission, either positively, or negatively. We think the important question is, 
Are there going to be long-term changes? Will any of these behaviors stick? Will people learn to telecommute? Will they learn that they like online shopping? Will they learn to stay at home more, or be less willing to travel? The present situation could offer an unusual opportunity to think on the subject. We hope that these kinds of events, where people are actually pausing, and are in their homes, and have a chance to really think, and to use those moments, to communicate with one another, about the bigger issues that are facing us today, for our future generations to come. We are anonymous. United as one. Divided by none. Let our only planet we call home. Expect all of us, 